guys, welcome back to Carriage House 3 Rail Layout. Today I thought I'd take a few minutes and uh, show you what I've been doing for the last three weeks um, on this section of the layout. This particular section I referred to in some of my update uh, videos as Phase 4. It's basically where the track from Phase 3 off to my left, where the roundhouse um, is located, comes back around and loops back into the uh, main line off to my right here. So what you see in front of you here is the E section uh, that I've been working on and it's basically 42 inches wide uh, front to back and it's commonly referred to as a duck under. The only problem is that uh, being 42 inches wide, it's really not a duck under, it's a crawl under. I actually have to get down on my hands and knees um, to get from this side to the other side. So I was doing some research off the internet and discovered that there are several different strategies out there to uh, eliminate duck unders or crawl unders. Uh, there are lift up tables and drop down tables and if you really want to spend a lot of money you can buy these um, motor controlled lift tables um, for walking through uh, for access from one side to the other. I didn't want to spend that kind of money. Um, so I, uh, after a lot of angst, I, uh, I actually decided to do a lift up uh, swing away. Um, the swing away um, really wasn't going to work for me because of the way this section of the uh, layout is going to rise up to my right here and join back into a raised portion of the main line. Um, and I just didn't have the, the room uh, to do that. So that's why I decided on doing a lift up portion here. So the lift up section that I decided on is uh, 42 inches front to back and uh, 33 inches from right to left. Now the main reason I did not uh, really like this design option is because the hinges have to be on top and the hinges themselves have to be raised above the um, top rail uh, of your track and that presents some challenges uh, for uh, creating scenery to hide all of the the hinges and things that you're going to see but I think I figured out a way to do that such that the casual observer won't even know that they're there so when I started into this, it's actually demolition. Uh, I'd already permanently mounted this section of the uh, tabletop. Um, and so I had to uh, disassemble it all, cut it all out, um, recut new uh, two by fours and remake this particular section. But I quickly discovered that a 42 inch by 33 inch 2x4 with half inch plywood and half inch homo soap section uh, was really heavy uh, to lift up. So after I um, went through about uh, 100 different hinge options, uh, those that didn't have a whole lot of uh, play in them, I uh, researched everything from $25 each um, precision ball bearing heavy door, access door hinges, um, and I really didn't want to spend that kind of money. So I ended up going to uh, Home Depot and basically going through their selection of hinges and came upon the hinges that I actually ended up settling on here um, that basically have no play at all in them. I uh, The first one that I happened to pick up from the bin had no play, and I'm thinking, oh, this is great. Um, it has like a plastic sleeve bearing surface uh, in between the components of the hinge. The second one that I picked up because I wanted to do two hinges on this section uh, had play in it. I said, well, I can't have that. So I picked up the third one. It had play and the fourth one had play. So <laughs> I ended up going through the entire bin at Home Depot and on the 45th hinge I found 
a second one that had no play. So basically two hinges out of 47 hinges had no play, um, which is what I installed on this section of the layout here. So uh, these are the blocks that I actually had to uh, custom machine to mount the hinges on. Um, I actually measured the distance between the um, the 2x4 substructure that they was they were going to be screwed into and the thickness of the 2x4 and the homosote the height of the um, uh, the track that I have in the background here that actually measured roughly three quarters of an inch um, I had to machine these blocks um, using a, uh, a surface sander uh, to get it to the exact height that I needed so I didn't have an excessive amount of hinge showing on top of this section of the layout. So before I actually started the demolition and cutting into this thing, I wanted to um, do like a proof of concept. So I created this little mock-up here that I have in front of me here and it basically this is supposed to represent the the 2x4 section of the layout along here and I put a little bit of uh, um, plywood here really eighth inch thick plywood on here that represents the um, the homosote and the the, um, the half inch plywood and just basically mounted a hinge using double sided adhesive tape so I you can see here that it lifts up and you really don't want to go past vertical because now your tracks going to start crunching into one another you're probably wondering what this rod here is that you see sticking out from underneath well one of the things that I wasn't happy with was the weight of this thing it was really hard to lift up just picking it up and getting it into place to where I could line up the holes and, and drill the pilot holes for the screws uh, was a chore so I was thinking well, I need to have some sort of counterweight or counter counterbalance system. And I started out thinking, well, I'll just have some gas pneumatic um, uh, plungers on here that would lift up the table if I hit a little foot treadle. And that became pretty complex and expensive, so I abandoned that. And then basically what I ended up doing was coming up with a counterweight system here by designing and building a a steel beam a one inch by two inch wide beam that runs underneath the layout like that and the idea here is it's mounted to the swing section permanently and swings free of the permanently mounted section of the tabletop and on the the bottom of this cantilever here i have weights that I mount. So basically what happens is, and that weight that I mount here basically balances against the weight of this 42 by 36 inch section of the lift up swing up table. So I had to make sure that it was going to work before I actually started cutting in this thing and I got to this point and I'm thinking well you know this might work. So I started to cut things and fabricate this uh, metal section, get it all mounted up so I thought I'd kind of show you, without further ado, how this thing works. I'll set that aside and move this track out of the way. And excuse me for a second here, I'm going to back the camera up a little bit so I can show you how this works. So the idea here is you come up and um, I also wanted the, the younger, my younger children to be able to lift this up without hurting themselves or dropping it back down and slamming down and knocking all my scenery and landscaping. So the idea is you just basically come up and you lift it up. See, I'm doing it with one finger. Lifts up with one finger. When you get to about this point, the counterweight design starts acting against itself, where it's a little, it gets a little bit harder to lift up and then you become vertical. So you can kind of see here, along here, where I have this one inch steel tube, one inch by two inch steel tube. It's actually painted uh, smoke gray. It's an enamel spray paint that I had laying around the shop. I have it mounted 
permanently into the swing up section of the gate with um, carriage screws this way. They don't extend through the plywood through the thickness of the 2x4. Um, and then on the bottom here I have welded on some cut pieces of uh, angle iron with holes drilled in them and I have longer carriage bolts that basically screw up into the 2x4 piece that runs front to back here. Uh, it's a little bit of overkill, um, but I like to design that way. I just want to make sure that once it's in place, it's sturdy, it's strong, it's not going to come apart. Now, at this point over here, my original thought was to hard mount with carriage bolts into this section of the 2x4, and I actually did that, but when I was welding this thing together, there was just a little bit of twist in this beam here and what it was actually doing is when I bolted it down it started lifting this side up and when it came down it wasn't sitting flush whereas you can see right here it'll come down and it's pretty much flush there's a little bit of play in it but what I'm planning on doing underneath here is uh, I'm going to mount um, those uh, uh, magnets in the opposing sections, mating sections here, so when it gets down to here it'll basically suck it down and pull it down tight and to get through this thing all you do is lift it up and walk through and come back. So now what's interesting about this section layout I have manual switch controllers on both sides of this platform here and sometimes depending on how fast the trains are actually running and how many I have running um, I've got to run from this side to that side and back and forth and that's why the crawl under really wasn't working for me and I had to do something in this section. Eventually I'll have a TIU all hooked up to where I can manually or remote control via my remote control all of these switches. I'm just not there. Um, right now. So as you can see here, this is a lift up. There's actually a track that will be running and then curving around this way and coming up and meeting up with this raised section of the track on phase one. And then there'll be another track here in the back that will also come around as a double track. So once I get that all in place, I'll basically cut the track here and I'll cut it here and it'll swing up and allows me to quickly get from this side to that side with one hand and not have to duck under or crawl under. So uh, I thought you'd be interested in uh, seeing this. Um, I, I really didn't see a whole lot of O scale uh, sort of uh, lift gates uh, out on the internet. Um, and hopefully uh, this counterbalancing system that you see here uh, uh, can be of uh, some benefit to somebody else if, uh, if they want to do something as large as I've done right here. Enjoy and thanks for watching.